The other week, I showed you guys how to build a fully responsive bento box in Figma. But what's the point if you can't even launch it on a live website? So today, I'm gonna to show you guys how to build a fully responsive bento box in Webflow. All right, so I've gone ahead and created a brand new Webflow project. But before we start building anything, let's actually go and refer back to the designs and see what we are actually going to be doing. So I'm gonna pop over into Figma. And as you can see, we have a bento box. And this bento box we built in a previous tutorial and it's truly responsive. Now, remember, the strategy is really important. We can't just go start building something straight away or, or we can get a little bit lost. So let me just quickly review what we are going to be doing. Oh, and by the way, if you do want to follow along with all the visual assets and files, there is a link in the description so you can download the Figma file. Back to the tutorial. So we have an entire section. So, whoops, let me make this white. We have a section and on this website, and we can maybe call this the features section. So features, and inside the features section, we also have a container to make sure that the content inside sort of sits within this width, as you can see right there. So inside this features section, we might have a section called container, which will contain everything. And then inside the container, we then have the actual bento box itself, okay? So all this will start to make sense as we get deeper into the build. So inside the container, we also have an actual thing called the bento box. And inside the bento box, what do we have? We actually have two rows. So we have row one that contains the first three bento boxes. And then row two, which is exactly the same, which would just be a, a duplicate. And it contains the other three bento boxes. So in here, we have row one, and then we also have row two. In terms of semantics, naming our classes and giving names to our elements in a website, one and two probably doesn't really make that much sense. And it's probably bad semantics. Instead, we might call them row odd. So the first one will be odd because it will be number one. And then the second one would be row even. So if we ever plan to add more rows, it makes sense because we would go from odd to even to odd to even. And just adding one, two, three, four gets a little bit convoluted and a little bit messy. So that's just me being a little bit picky on the naming convention. Now, the last thing we need to know and notice is that in the first row and the second row, one of the boxes, this one and this one, are different sizes. They're a little bit bigger than the ones on the uh, on the right in the first row. And on, on the second row, this one is a little bit bigger than the other two. And we might call these ones focus. So inside the bento box, we might have a box with an additional name called focus, okay? And that's just for us to be able to specifically target and tell the browser or tell Webflow that we want something a little bit different for this box. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's dive into Webflow and let's see how we are going to create this. So the first thing we need to do is we want to make sure that we have body selected and we want to select body or pages. So we're going to style all the body tags on our website. We're gonna go down to the bottom under backgrounds and we're gonna change the background color to black. You are now officially a website developer. I am a web developer. Give yourself a pat on the back. Now, the second thing we need to do is we need to go ahead. My favorite shortcut is command on a Mac or control on a Windows plus E. So Command E or Control E opens up the quick finder and we're gonna put down a div. We could use a section, but I'm just going to use div for simplicity sakes right now. And div is short for division. So a division of content that we are putting on our website. We're gonna give this a name, a class name of, if we go back to our Figma file, a whole section dedicated to our features. So it could be features, it could be anything that we want, but I'm just going to call this features. Now inside the features, if you remember, we have a box called or division called container. And this, if we just, if you just give me one second, I'm going to just hide all these drawings really quickly. Because once again, I want to make sure that you understand why we're doing this. You can see that inside this bento box actually sits within a specific bounding box right here. There are spacing on the side. So we actually want to do that by going 
putting down a new div and we're going to call this container. Now this container needs to have some sort of behavior. It needs to tell the browser something. And the one thing we need to do is because we know that it's going to be 1,200 pixels um, for the max width, we'll do 1,200 pixels max width. And on the margins, as you can see, this container is sitting right to the edge of the left side. We want this centered in the browser. So on the margin, we'll set auto, auto to left and right. And this will set automatic margins on the left and right to perfectly center this on the viewport or on the browser. So that's pretty much all we need to do for the container. Now inside the container, if we pop back into Figma, we have, let me just make our things visible, our notes. We have a actual box called Bento box. And inside the Bento box, we will have two rows, row odd and row even. So if, if I pop back into Webflow, we'll go um, feature, oops, our container needs to be inside our features. Just make sure that's happening. So click and drag and put it under your features if that didn't happen. And we're gonna hit Command D. We're gonna put a new div down and we're gonna call this Bento box. All right, looking very good. And our Bento box will need to have some sort of behavior because if we go back to Figma, our Bento box actually stacks, has two rows sitting on top of each other with a gap. So two rows inside the Bento box and there is a gap of 20 pixels in between each row. So if we go into Figma, we want to, oh, sorry, Webflow. It's been too much time in Figma. We want to change our, our display item for the Bento box to Flexbox. We want the direction of our content to be vertical. We want to make sure our alignment of items is pretty much stretching to the edges. And we want to make sure that we have a 20 pixel row in between our, our two rows of content. And that looks pretty good. So just a quick reminder, Flexbox is auto layout. So if you click on your Bento box, our uh, box, you can see that auto layout has the same configurations. We have direction, vertical, 20 pixels in between, and that's what we're replicating on our Webflow project. Now let's go back into Webflow. So inside our Bento box, I'm gonna hit Command E or Control E on a Windows uh, device, put down another div, and this div is going to be called Bento box underscore row dash even. Oh, so, sorry, that would be odd as the first one. So because it's the first row and one is an odd number, I'm gonna call it odd. Now this row will need to be able to let me just go back, need to hold three boxes inside. We could use Flexbox to do this, but because this is a grid of items, there is an actual attribute that we can use in Webflow or CSS called CSS grid. So whenever you are trying to build a component where it is literally a grid of items, you should definitely use CSS grid. So if we go back to Webflow, while selecting the bento box row dash um, odd, under, let me just quickly see, under display, we go and select the third icon, grid. And this allows us to create a really cool grid. So we want to make sure that we have three columns. So one, two, three, and only one row. So I'm gonna delete that. Looking good. So now that the grid has been set up, we want to start to put some content inside. So if we go back into Figma, you can see that we have a natural box, a card that we call it. And inside the card, we have an image and then we also have some text. So we're gonna go back into Webflow while the bento box row dash odd is selected. We hit Command E, we put down another div and we're gonna call this um, bento box row dash card. So this is going to be the card where we're gonna store the information. While that is selected, hit Command E, we're gonna put down an image just like that and we're going to give this a class name of bento box dash image uh, underscore image. Under that, we're going to hit command E once again, and we're going to put down a heading. And once we got the heading down, we might select a heading three, just like that. And we might give this all H3 headings. And we will give this a color of, let's just give it DDD, three Ds, Th three Ds. And we'll also align it to the, the center. So that's looking pretty good. Now we just have to add some styling inside. So once we've got our information inside, we can select our card 
we will go ahead and give it 20 pixels padding on the top and bottom left and right. That will give it some breathing room. We can also go ahead and make sure that we have a border. So what, scroll all the way down to borders, making sure we have a solid style, one pixels, and we're gonna change this to, let's just go two, 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 three twos. And hopefully on the, my screen recording, sometimes you don't uh, see it, but it will appear on your screen. I might make mine a little bit lighter just because the way this gets recorded, sometimes you can't see the darker colors. Hopefully that appears on your screen. And then we also want to round the corners of the box. So under borders, radius, we will change this from zero to eight pixels. And you can see we have our first card. Now, what we want to do is we actually want to go ahead and place one of those images in. So what we can do is we can go ahead and select the cog while selecting the image, select the cog, choose image, just make sure you upload the thumbnails. And once again, if you didn't get these thumbnails, you can download the file. There is a link in the description so you can get all these assets. You can pop that in and you can see our very first card is starting to come to life. What we can do is now we can go ahead and select our card, hit Command C or Control C on a Windows, and we can go selecting the parent container and just hit Command V once, twice, and we have three of the same cards. As you can see, we need to make the first one. The final thing we need to do for this row is, if you remember, we've got our content in, it's looking great. We just need to make sure that this one is a little bit larger. So what we need to do is, we need to go ahead and select the actual grid. Um, if you select your row dash odd, we just have to go under layout. We can go edit grid, and we just need to go and drag the first column to maybe around two, FR. So FR just means fractional unit, which means just imagine it's like a percentage. So this just gives you a larger percent over the other columns. And this will stay fixed. Depending on how we might want to lay this out, we could go ahead and if we wanted the titles to all be down at the bottom, you can select the card, any of the cards. We can go ahead and under layout once again, we can change this to flexbox and we can go to vertical and we can go select justify and we can justify our content so they sit far from each other. So flushed against the edges of the box itself. One last thing is this image, because this image is being set to 100% width, it's actually extending the height of these boxes quite significantly and it's creating a lot of space beneath them. So what we can do is we can actually set a max a width actually of maybe 300 pixels that brings the image to a lot smaller size, which then collapses the height of this box, which means these ones also look a lot better as well. The last thing we wanna do is just make sure that all our content is aligned to the center. As you can see, they look pretty good, but the last thing is making sure that the card is selected and we just want to align under display, align, center, and that will center all our images. The last thing we need to do is actually go ahead, well not last thing, the last thing to make our desktop view look beautiful is we're gonna go ahead and select the odd row, Command C, select Bento box, Command V inside, and we're gonna duplicate the row. Now we wanna go ahead in the style selector, we want to select the little arrow on the class name and we wanna duplicate this class. And what this will do is it will duplicate the entire component but if we can now detach it from the original class, meaning that we can rename this to even, and we're going to set some different configurations to this row. And the different configuration we're going to set is under display, edit grid, we are just going to set the first column back to one, and then we're going to set the last one to two, to FR. Close that, and there we have it. We have our very first view of our bento box. This is not complete just yet. There's a few things that we need to do because if we take a look at this in the play button, we can see, let me just see if I can grab that. Let me try grab the actual preview. Sometimes it's very difficult to get that little view. Let me see if I can get it. Yeah, there we go. Oh, we missed it. Anyways, we're gonna make this smaller and you can see that it's responsive to an extent, right? What we wanna do is we wanna make sure that when we are collapsing, the viewport, it's similar to this. Remember, we need to make sure that our images and our grid layouts are going to collapse like that 
in a responsive behavior. What we need to do is we're going to go into tablet view. Unclick the play button. And in the tablet view, what we want to do is we want to make sure we select the rows. We go into our grid. And then what we want to do is we actually want to delete one of the columns and then actually increase one of the rows. All right. And then what we want to do for the second one is for the even is the same thing. Go to edit grid, delete one, one of the columns and increase one of the rows. As you can see, we want two rows now, but we also want to change the configuration and the behaviors of how it will look on the tablet. So on the first one, let's go back to the first grid, edit grid. We want to change the first column to one FR, one FR, so one fractional unit. And then the second one, we select the last card and under the grid child, under position, we actually want this one to span across two columns because there are two columns. So we change one to two and that's looking good. We can go to the second bento box, row even, select that, head over to edit grid. Once again, we want to change this to two FR each. And then we actually want to go select the last card and we want to change this to two columns. So if we go back to the first one, you can see that it's looking pretty good. If we hit play and we just bring that in a little bit, you can see once it hits the tablet breakpoint, it will stack. Perfect. Now we want to do that for the mobile. So select the play button to go back into edit view. We can go into mobile. Mobile is looking great on horizontal. And then on portrait, we actually want to go ahead and select the grid go to edit grid and we want to delete all columns and we want to add all the rows. Okay. That's what we want to do. We want one column and three rows. So we have to go ahead and select each card and we want to make sure that we are setting. Whoops. Actually we go and select the one that we set to go across two columns, reset that back to one. And you'll notice that will fix the entire grid because remember previously we had the last one span across two, but because we've told the grid to actually only be one column, that was the issue that was what you were seeing here. The re even though we had set one column as the grid behavior, you see two over here is because the last card in that grid was set to two column span. Set that to one and that will fix all your issues. And if you select the last card in the row even back to one column as well, Whoops, and then we have to change the behavior for the grid as well. Select the entire row, go to edit grid. We have to change the columns, remove one of them and add an extra row. And there we have it, beautiful. Now, one minor thing that I do wanna do is just go to your bento box, go back to desktop view, go to your bento box, add 20 margin on the left and right, just like that. And now if we go and hit play, you will see that this bento box is probably the most delicious bento box that you've ever created yourself and that you've seen online. So as we go all the way down, bang, it re will reset, resize itself, beautiful, responsive. We go all the way down. And because if we go this view, let me just bring that back up. If you go back down to mobile, and you resize that, you can see that this is the most beautiful, responsive Venter box that you've seen this entire year. So hopefully you found this tutorial extremely useful and that you can actually maybe apply it to your very own portfolio design or a new website that you are currently working on. Now, if you found this tutorial useful, make sure to gently smash that like button, subscribe for the Dahad fan. If you want to continue learning, you should definitely check out this video.